Good morning, men, and welcome to another episode of Man Up with DeBell Ministries. My name is Randy, and you can find out more about what we do at DeBellIndustries.com. You can see us on Facebook, YouTube. We do a little bit on Instagram, Twitter. But man, check this thing out and just see what DeBell Industries is all about. It's all about building men, building families. And, uh, you know, God just convicts me of things that I need to change in my life. And a lot of times, I just share those things. I share life stories. I'm a storyteller. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. But I am a storyteller. And I just try for this to be a wake-up call to men and to lead your family, to be different in front of your family, to be true, to be real, to be you and godly in front of your family. And today, I just want to talk a little bit about faith. I have a couple of great stories. Man, I learned a lot about faith by watching my sons and what they learned in a great church about faith. You know, Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us, uh, gives us a definition of faith. And, and just simply put, it's believing and trusting in something or someone when you can't see them. You can't see it. You haven't touched it. You haven't held it. It's not sitting in your lap. You haven't driven it, but you still believe in it. That's faith. That's faith. And, you know, a few questions we all have to ask ourselves is this. Do you believe that God can do anything? Do you believe that he can heal and change and restore a life? Do you believe he can change the circumstances, big and little? So many times you think, well, that's too big for God, or that's too little for God. He doesn't care, but he wants to be a part of everything in our life. Do you believe that God can cause the greatest impossibilities to yield to Jesus? Here's the thing about faith in this whole thing. If you don't have faith, if you don't believe, your family won't either. Your family wants to follow your lead. Your wife wants to follow your lead. Your kids, your teenagers, your college-age kids, even your kids that are grown and have families of their own, they still look to you. They still look to Dad. Dad, what do you think? What should we do? Should we buy that house, buy that piece of property? Faith. Your family will either learn from yours and follow yours, or they won't. So guys, it is on us to show faith in God to our family. I have two anchors for you today, two scriptures, God's Word. That is our anchor, nothing else. No book, no leadership book, uh, no video on YouTube, nothing else. Our anchor is God's Word, God's Holy Word, the Bible period. Luke 18, 27. Now this is Jesus talking here, okay? He said, what is impossible with men is possible with God. What is impossible with men is possible with God. In Psalms 37, 23, this has become one of my favorite verses. The steps of the godly are ordered by the Lord. He delights in every detail of their life. The steps of the godly are ordered of the Lord. He delights in every detail of their lives. Here's the great thing. God has never lost. He's never been beaten. He's never let me down. He's never deserted me or disappointed me. He's never crushed my spirit or hurt me. God's never, ever been late. He's never forgot. Here's the great news. And he's not starting now. That's not a good father. That's not God. And praise God, he, he, he's not human. Otherwise, we'd be in a lot of trouble right now. But he's our good heavenly father that wants to love us and bless him as we seek out a relationship with him. A great story about my youngest son, Dan. When he was, uh, I think, right around 17, 18, just started going to... Roger State, and he was looking for a vehicle. He was wanting a truck. Him and his brothers had shared a, a Ford Focus, driven that through high school, and, and 
and it was just, it was time. And he just wanted something of his own. And he said, Dad, I'm going to start be believing for a truck. And one thing I love about my wife is she saves everything. And uh, she came across this picture of the truck that Dan was believing for quite a few years ago, a, a long time ago. And uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there is a, a picture of this truck. And it's what Dan hung up in his room and on his mirror, something he looked at every day. And, and underneath the truck, it, it says the things he wanted. Ford F-150, Super Crew, four-wheel drive, black exterior, black leather interior, low mileage. He was on the hunt for a truck. But every day, this was in front of him. Every day, he looked at this. Every day, he thanked God for this. He'd been working hard, saving money, had a great uh, credit score. And, you know, a few weeks went by, more weeks went by, and we were kind of looking here and there. But one day, we were driving through uh, Claremore, Route 66. And there is this itty-bitty car lot. He had maybe 10 or 15 cars and tr our trucks. And there sits the truck. So we go in there and we look it all over. I crawl underneath of it, crawl all around it. He said, here, here's the keys. Take it for a test drive. So we took it for a test drive. It rode great. It was straight down the road. Put on the brakes. Broke. You know, it would just break straight. It was just a great truck. And it was everything he wanted. Everything his heart's desired. And then we get to talking price, and the price was perfect. We were even kind of shocked at the price, that this guy didn't want more money for this truck. But it was blessings on Dan. It was favor on Dan as he stood there and talked to this gentleman about this truck. But man, it was Dan's faith. You know, I didn't just go out and buy him a truck. I couldn't. He, he worked for this thing, but it was also his faith. He was believing God for it. He got the deal of the century. He got the truck that he was exactly wanting and looking for. Takes us back right to Psalms 37. Talking about God here now. The last part of that verse, he delights in every detail of their lives. Even a truck. Here's another great story for you. Uh, Brad. When Brad was, just as soon as he could start talking, this kid started, he wanted a horse. He'd pick up a little plastic horse and uh, uh, he'd, he'd point at it. Mm. But before he could say horse, pony, anything, he wanted one. That was his heart's desire. And you know, I'm not a, I'm not a rancher. I don't know anything about horses. Whenever I've got on a horse, it tried to scrub me off on a tree post, uh, anything. Just, if it could scrub me off somewhere, I, I've only been like on two or three horses. I know nothing about them. And I don't like them. I don't like to ride them. And, uh, but this was just born in this kid. He loved horses, loved animals. Any animal just took a shine to Brad. And, and so here he was, this itty bitty boy. And at night, uh, we'd sit on his bed and he'd start saying his prayers. Man, he was learning this in church. He just started thanking Jesus for his horse. And he had these big, long-winded prayers that went on forever. And I remember some nights sitting there, and I was so tired. I was just thinking, Brad, put an amen to it. Put a period on that thing. I just, I just want to get cleaned up and go to bed. Thank God I had the wisdom not to shut him down or to, to quiet him down or just say amen. I can't tell you how many times I just wanted to say amen, Brad. Amen. But he prayed and believed God for that horse. And so, man, he started growing, you know, a few years go by. He's 9, 10, 11 years old. We knew a family that lived on a, a church camp property. And at this church camp, they had horses. And so during the summers, Brad would go out there and stay, and uh, he would work like a man. He was cleaning out stalls. He was brushing horses. He was helping with the trail rides. He was baling hay. 
him and his friend out there, right about the same age, they worked like men. And they did it for free. They just gave it all their work to Jesus. And it was so cool to, to watch this as he grew. And, but he was learning all about horses because he said, one day, I'm going to have a horse. I'm going to have my own horse. And he knew exactly what he wanted. He wanted a quarter horse that was a sorrel, that, that brown color, I know that much, that had white socks and the, the blaze here on the front of its face. He wanted that to be white too. That's exactly what he wanted in a horse. That's what he was praying for. Every day he would thank God and thank Jesus for this horse that he never laid eyes on, that he didn't have, and we had no place for it. But this kid kept believing, believing God for this horse. But he was doing his part. He was working his butt off. <laughs> he was learning all about horses. So then he gets about to the sixth grade. And in his class there at church, they were going to have a visitor contest. And the grand prize was pretty great, was a $500 gift certificate. Uh-huh, I wanted to win the visitor contest. $500 gift certificate to the store of your choice. All right, sounds good. Brad says, I'm going to win the contest. Well, how are you going to do that? I'm going to invite everybody. Everybody in fifth or sixth grade, I'm going to invite them. His whole baseball team. He invited his baseball team. Uh, any kid that uh, just walked down the street, Brad would invite them to church. And it was just so incredible to watch him. I'm going to win the contest. Well, there was another girl in his class that said the exact same thing. I'm going to win the contest. And so this went on for, I think, four to six weeks, this vis visitor contest. And one week, Brad would be ahead. The next week, the girl. Then Brad. The girl. Then Brad. The girl. So it comes down to the final week. And Brad had worked so hard. And sure enough, they announced the winner. The winner of the visitor contest, Brad D. Bell. He won the contest. 500 bucks the store of his choice. So the accounting department there at the church calls me up and says, well, Mr. DeBell, where would you like this, uh, you know, this check or whatever, where, where do you want it made out to? What store? And so I looked at Brad and said, Brad, what store? You know, what, where do you want to spend this? And he knew immediately, Horse and Hound Supply. It was a store in Tulsa. I don't even know if they're still around, still open. But he said, horse and hound supply, that's who they need to make it out to. Awesome. So we get the money, and we go to horse and hound supply. And we walk in there, and the person comes over and, and looks at me, and, and okay, how, how can I help you? And I said, you're talking to the wrong guy. You know, that, that Brad right here, the 12-year-old, the, the blondie blonde, uh, he's the horseman. He knows all about horses. And he said, well, he said, I'm looking for a saddle. I want to buy a saddle today. And it was so cool watching this person. Once again, the favor of God was all over my son, Brad. It was just incredible. You know, it was, it's, it was amazing. So as they looked at saddles, this person just said, well, you just won't believe it. Today, and today only, you know, if you buy this saddle, You'll get a blanket, or you'll get some saddlebags, or you'll get this, or you'll get that. And just everything was on, had a sale price, or came free. And he ended, ended up with this beautiful Carhartt jacket with horse and hound embroidered on the, on the back of it. And just everything he needed to take care of this horse that he didn't have. Oh, wait a second. I got to skip back here. The person in the store asked him, what kind of horse do you have? And Brad said, well, I don't have a horse yet. I don't have a horse yet. And that person smiled. And that's when Brad gained favor with this person in the store. And it was amazing. This kid just got loaded up that day. He came out of there, I think, with almost $800 worth of merchandise and paid $500 for it. So where does all this merchandise go? We don't have a horse. We don't have a barn. We don't have any place to put it. Well, it goes in his room. 
and there it is in his room and he's always messing with it and fiddling with it and sitting on it and and just all this stuff everything all the way down from that little pick tool that you use to clean out their hooves their hooves you know everything he knew what to do with this stuff i didn't he just keeps believing god for this horse so in summers you know he's he's 12 uh, right around 12 then about 13 14 years old He's still going out in the summers and working at, at this kid's camp, working with these horses, doing it all for free. He's sowing seed. He's sowing seed for his horse. And thanking God every day. Thank you, Lord, for my horse. And the camp director at that time had a son, and a little, a little older than Brad, I believe, a couple of years. And so they were going to show some horses. Uh, they're at the county fair, and they one Saturday afternoon, they said, Hey, Brad, come on with us, and we're going to go show these horses. So they went to the fair, and one horse got a got a blue ribbon. The other horse that, that Dustin was showing uh, didn't get a first place. And as he was walking that horse out of the arena, he had big tears in his eyes. And his dad went up to him, and he said, Dustin, why? Why are you teary-eyed? Are you crying? Because this horse got second place at the fair? And Dustin said, no, no, Dad. He said, I'm crying because I'm happy. Because the Holy Spirit, the Lord told me I'm supposed to give this horse to Brad. And so they walk over to Brad and they hand him the lead rope and say, Brad, would you like to have this horse? Would you like to own Rose? Would you like her to be yours? And he said, of course, <laughs> yes. But you know, it was the horse he prayed for. It was a quarter horse, a sorrel, white socks, and it had a, the blaze, the white here on, it, on its forehead. And what was so cool about it, as you would look at the hair in the blaze of this horse, between the white and between the brown, you could see his initials, B, D, on the forehead of this horse. And it was incredible. It was his horse. That horse was born for Brad D. Bell. And I thought about that. You know, it was, it was so wonderful to just see that all happen. And then a couple years after that, uh, we know a guy, knew a guy that was in the rodeo. And he was getting out of, the, out of the rodeo business and stuff, and he had a great horse, a roping horse, a very talented horse. And uh, he came to me and he said, Do you think Brad? Would like to have Charlie? Yeah. So he comes around and he brings Charlie. Charlie gets to come live with us. And <laughs> but it was so cool. God, that's how, what a good father God is. Brad was believing God for one horse. Well, he gets one. And then he gets another horse given to him. Saddle, tack, blanket, everything. So here he is, totally loaded up, two horses and all the stuff. And praise God, God provided a place for us to keep those horses. And, and to this day, Rose is still alive and well in Brad's pasture on his property. And uh, she's fat and sassy. And, uh, but she, and every time I look at her, I think faith. I think about faith. I think about that young man's faith. And you know, as Brad's life went on, he, he met a beautiful, smart young woman, got married, and they wanted to start a family. But doctors were saying impossible. We go back to Luke 18. What is impossible with men is possible with God. And I know Brad was thinking, well, I had faith and believed for a horse. We can certainly have faith and believe for a baby. And for eight years, almost eight years, they prayed and believed and had faith in God for a baby. When man said, no way, when man said, it's impossible, when man said, you need to look at other options, they said, it's our heart's desire to have a baby of our own. And it was so cool to see that come to pass. Just the other day, we celebrated that sweet little baby girl's birthday, Aspen Lace is her name, and she's a little miracle baby that wasn't ever supposed to be born. Isaiah 65, 23, and 24, 
This is a verse that will knock your socks off if you really study it and read it. It says, They will not work in vain, and their children will not be doomed to misfortune. For they are people blessed by the Lord, and their children too will be blessed. I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. That is the God we serve. That is the God we serve, our Father. It's not hard to have faith and trust and hope in a Father like that. So men, I encourage you today, I challenge you today, man up, be a man of faith. Speak faith, talk faith. Your family will follow your lead. Live it for them. Teach it to them. You won't regret a second of it. Next time out, guys, we're going to talk about the stupid years. I had about five years in my life, my married life with kids, where I went stupid. And I'm going to share a few details of that. It's embarrassing. It's, uh, I really hate talking about it. But if it helps one of you and keeps one of you from going down the road called stupid, well, we're going to talk about it. That's what we'll do. And guys, I always respectfully remind you to drive like a man. Put the phone down. Distracted driving kills. And man, if you need somebody to talk to, contact me at debellindustries at gmail.com. Email me and we'll talk. We'll sit down, have a sweet tea, talk on the phone, whatever. But if you just need someone to share with and talk with, I'm here for you. Guys, always, always, always remember, God loves you, and so do I. Go out and make it a great one.